Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. Uh, checking in on the latest financial results from one of America's largest cannabis companies, Cresco Labs, reporting uh, the latest results this morning. Uh, and interesting numbers to dig into here is we got uh, record revenue and EBITDA in their fourth quarter. The company reported revenue of $162.3 million. That topped expectations. It also reported adjusted EBITDA of about $50 million also ahead of expectations. And those updates come as New York apparently closes in on a deal to legalize marijuana for adults above the age of 21. Of course, Cresco Labs, one of the companies already operating there for medical marijuana and happy to bring on with us here today, uh, the CEO of Cresco Labs, Charlie Bactel, joins us once again. Uh, Charlie, good to be chatting with you, man. I guess we'll just start with the, the results uh, here in the quarter because not only did you top expectations in those two numbers I walked through, but also same store uh, sales growth pretty noticeable there as well. So talking about what you saw in the quarter as we've seen continued demand uh, across the sector. Zach, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's good to be back. Uh, yeah, we were happy to be able to report these Q4 results today. Um, you know, it's, it's a good story to tell. 2020 was an incredibly strong year for us, over 270% growth year over year. Uh, we've truly established ourselves as, as the largest uh, wholesaler of branded cannabis products in, in the industry. Um, it was also nice BDS Analytics, which is an analytics company that covers the space, identifying Cresco as the number one selling brand of cannabis in the country. So a lot of positives, happy to meet uh, and, and beat expectations. And it's, uh, it's a good place to start 2021 from. And you guys, I mean, we, we last time we had you on the show, we were talking about your expansion into Florida. Uh, we'll be talking about New York in a second. But I mean, when you look at how you guys differentiate from the competitors, it's interesting to see Cureleaf, one of your U.S. competitors looking abroad. You got Green Thumb kind of uh, digging into drinks here with their partnerships. How, how do you look at Cresco as maybe differentiating from some of the other cannabis companies that are growing here uh, in the U.S.? Sure. You know, I, I think it goes back to even the, the fundamentals of the way that we approach the industry uh, very strategic geographic footprint. So it's strategic breadth. Um, we like having top three market share and the market shares that we're in. That depth is very important. Uh, and then we've always prioritized those middle two verticals of the value chain, which is branded products and distribution of those branded products. So a very traditional CPG approach to the space. Um, that has been a differentiator for us uh, in the peer set. We, we definitely are intent on really growing our brands and making sure that they get into as many retail stores as possible, not just the retail stores that we own. So it's it's really good to be able to show the value of that business model and thesis and also this track record of execution that we're displaying. Well, one of those markets that you're in already, uh, perhaps looking to expand to recreational use, that being New York, uh, you guys operate there in a medical capacity. Uh, but it sounds like Governor Cuomo talking yesterday that they're in the final innings of closing a deal there. Of course, we've heard that before, but uh, optimistic that the deal could come through to legalize for adults over the age of 21 by the April 1st budget deadline. So, I mean, if that were to happen, how quickly do you think Cresco Labs would be able to ramp up uh, locations there in that state? Because we know it takes a little bit of time for things to work through in the logistics and the legal side of the business. But but what's the outlook uh, for you if that is the case? Yeah, fortunately for us, you know, it, it just said at the very outset, incredibly encouraging to see the development and the progress that's being made uh, in New York on the issue. It, it somewhat mirrors the, the progress uh, and the conversations that we're seeing at a federal level, too. But as it relates to New York, you know, as you said, we, we've seen this over the last couple of years. They've gotten close in getting this across the finish line. It looks like this is going to be the year that it happens. Uh, we're very encouraged by it, but very excited to see the final language of the bill, too. Uh, as far as ramping up, this is where it really does fit into our, our sweet spot here. This is this is what we do at Cresco. We know how to we know how to build facilities. We know how to grow <clears throat> the product. Uh, we know how to open up retail stores. We know how to bring bring product to uh, to consumers. Uh, it's it's part of the track record of success. We've we've been the first to sort of make it through those very similar stage gates uh, in in Pennsylvania. Uh, in Ohio, even in Illinois here, we're the, we're, we're the first and still only operator that's been able to open up all of our eligible stores. So, you know, that that ability to really uh, take advantage of the opportunities that we have in our portfolio is is a strength of ours. So we're excited about it. And lastly, we also I mean, that's the excitement on the East Coast in terms of New York, perhaps legalizing. But federally, uh, we once again saw the Safe Banking Act introduced 
Uh, that would change the banking laws uh, around companies like yours to access capital and change the laws on that side. We've seen that before as well. It hasn't gone uh, much of anywhere in, in getting past outside of the House. Uh, talk to me about how that might change things as well, uh, because I'm sure you'd take either one at this point. Um, but how would it change maybe how you guys operate as a company in, in putting some of your capital to work? It's a it's a great question, and and you know we're optimistic that we're going to get both. So it's 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 really a potential uh, potential great story here that'll develop in the next few weeks. But um, you know, safe it, for sure, it has implications for organizations like ours. Cost of capital, access to capital, cost of capital have always been um, sort of uh, uh, really really big issues that this industry has had to deal with. And you're talking about the fastest growing industry in America. Uh, over $17.5 billion worth of sales last year, 300 plus thousand individuals are actually employed in the space, and we're doing it with one hand tied behind our back. We don't have access to traditional uh, banking opportunities. So for us, it'll bring down cost of capital, um, which is a big unlock. It'll allow us to invest more in infrastructure and, again, keep the industry developing the way it is. I think it's also very important to note it's an incredible unlock for the future development of the broader industry too. Uh, as this industry is developing on a state by state basis, you know, inclusivity and diversity is a big part of where the adult use side of this industry is going and access to capital for those smaller startups is going to be a, a gating issue uh, for them to get into the space. So uh, access to small business loans, that seed capital to actually open more doors, not only is it a requirement for those new entrants, it's also an unlock for a company like Cresco that is wholesale focused and sees that as potential new partners that we'll be able to sell into. All right, well, we'll be watching for either one of those updates. Got to have you back on. But nonetheless, even without them, still able to top expectations in the latest quarter. Cresco Labs CEO, Charlie Bactel. Uh, always love having you on. Thanks again for joining us today.